OpenVAS, short for Open Vulnerability Assessment System, is an open-source tool designed to scan computer systems and networks for security vulnerabilities. It conducts scans to detect known vulnerabilities in software, configurations, and network setups. OpenVAS offers a robust platform for vulnerability assessment, encompassing scanning capabilities, detailed reporting, and recommendations for remediation. This tool is highly regarded among security professionals and system administrators for fortifying the security of their systems and networks. Now, let's proceed to install it on my Kali Linux system. When I try to attempt to install OpenVAS on Kali Linux using the command apt install OpenVAS, it successfully downloads the repository and completes the installation process. After installation, you can locate OpenVAS in the Vulnerability Scanner section of the Kali menu. Within this section, you'll find three tools, one for initialization, another for starting the service, and a third for stopping it. However, the issue arises when attempting to initialize the database and configure it, as it fails to download various vulnerability databases crucial for exploitation. Although the dashboard panel is accessible, the vulnerability scanning functionality is compromised. But not to worry. In today's video, I'll guide you through the installation process of OpenVAS without encountering any errors. By the end, we'll be using it to scan Metasploitable too. Let's get started with the video. If you encounter any download errors while initializing the database, you can skip this step. For an effective installation, we'll be utilizing Docker. If you're unfamiliar with Docker, be sure to watch our previous discussions on it. Firstly, we need to install Docker. If you already have it installed, you can proceed to the next step. Run sudo apt update to update the repository. Once the repository database is updated, execute sudo apt install docker.io and include hyphen y to initiate the installation process without any interruptions. At last, Docker has been successfully installed. Once Docker is installed, you can check its version using the version flag. Before installing OpenVAS, let's verify that Docker is functioning correctly by running Hello World. Additionally, we'll configure a few settings before proceeding with the OpenVAS installation. It indicates that running Docker containers requires the use of the sudo command. However, I'm going to show you how to run Docker without needing root privileges. In the terminal, type sudo usermod hyphen a capital G space docker space dollar sign user and press enter. After successful execution, log out and log back in to apply the changes. Now, we can run hello world without using sudo. Everything should work smoothly without any issues. To ensure Docker runs every time we start our Kali machine, we'll use sudo system control, enable docker hyphen hyphen now. Alternatively, if you prefer not to do this, you can simply start the Docker service each time you want to use it by running service docker start. Now, we're prepared to install OpenVAS. Begin by searching OpenVAS Docker on Google. From here, select the Docker Hub link. Here, you'll find detailed instructions provided on this page. Firstly, we need to pull the Docker container. Copy the provided command and paste it into your terminal. The pulling process will commence automatically. Please note that this process may take some time depending on your internet speed. Once the pulling is complete, the container will be extracted and created. Scroll down the Docker Hub page to find this command. This command is used to fetch the container from the Docker registry and start it up. 
Keep in mind that the startup process for OpenVAS can be time-consuming, usually taking around 4 to 5 minutes while the NBTs are scanned and databases are rebuilt. Be patient during this stage. Once the process is complete, we can launch OpenVAS. Run the command, docker ps, to check on which port it is running. Typically, it runs on the default SSL port 443. Now, open your preferred web browser and access OpenVAS by entering the local IP address and specified port. Upon accessing OpenVAS, you may encounter a warning about potential risks. Ignore this warning, proceed by clicking Advance, and accept the risk to continue. Subsequently, a login page will appear. Here, it asks to input the username and password. At the login screen, input credentials, username, admin, password, admin. You are now ready to log in to OpenVAS. Once logged in, you can initiate a vulnerability scan. Additionally, you'll find various commands on the Docker Hub page, such as running bash inside the container, changing the port, setting the admin password, and more. If needed, simply copy the relevant command and paste it into your terminal. Another important task is updating the Network Vulnerability Tests, NVTs. This needs to be done occasionally. You can update the container by executing a few commands within it. Use the command docker exec-it openvas bash to start an interactive bash prompt within the openvas container. This allows you to execute commands specific to openvas, such as updating and restarting services. Once inside the container, run these following command one by one. If the NVT sync isn't responding, similar to when trying to initialize OpenVAS without Docker's assistance, we might encounter the same issue. Let's ping feed.openvast.org in another terminal to check for network issues. If you see no response, it's likely there's a connectivity problem. The Docker Bash shell also indicates the same issue. A connection timeout error may occur due to server downtime. If it worked on a different day, you can try running all these commands again. After updating, restart the scanner and the OpenVAS manager with the following command. Now, within the bash shell, type exit to exit the shell. Then, run reboot to reboot your Kali machine and apply the changes. It's important to remember that each time we launch a program using Docker, it creates a new container. For example, when we executed the docker run hello world command, docker created a container specifically for running that program. By default, once the container stops, that is, when you exit the shell or reboot, it is not automatically deleted. You can view all containers, including stopped ones, by running the command docker ps it in the Kali terminal. This command provides you with the container ID and the name of the program that owns the container. If you need to access OpenVAS again, you can use the command docker start openvas. The OpenVAS container is now up and running. Now, open your browser and enter the local IP address to access the GUI manager for OpenVAS. Let's explore how OpenVAS can assist in scanning a vulnerable web application. For this demonstration, I'll be using Metasploitable 2. The IP address of my Metasploitable 2 server is 192.168.56.104. I won't delve into the step-by-step -step process of discovering the IP address here. To initiate a vulnerability scan, navigate to OpenVAS. On the OpenVAS dashboard, locate and click on the Scan tab. 
From the context menu, select task. Here, I encounter a welcome message, simply disregard it. Here, there are two ways to initiate a scan. The purple colored wizard icon guides you through the process in a step-by-step -step manner, asking for details at each stage. Alternatively, we'll opt for the non-wizard method. Click on new task to create a new scan task. A form will appear. Here, you need to provide a name for the task. Since we're scanning Metasploitable 2 in this example, let's name the task Metasploitable 2. You can leave the comments section blank, as it's optional. Now, let's add the target in the scan target section. Look for the star icon, which is used to add target details. Click on it. It will open a new form, where we can add a new target. In the name section, give it a name. In the host section, input the IP address you wish to scan. No other changes are needed. Click Create to proceed. It will automatically return to the previous form. If you wish to schedule scanning, you can configure it here. Additionally, there's another important aspect in the scanning section of the form. You can choose between OpenVAS default and CVE. In this instance, I've selected OpenVAS. Next, you'll need to configure the scan settings. This will help determine the type of scan you want to perform. For this demonstration, I've opted for full and fast. No further adjustments are necessary. Click on Create to finalize the task creation. Once the task is created, you'll need to take action to start it. On the left side of the task, you'll find various options such as Start, Stop, Move to Trash Can, Edit Task, and Export Task. Choose the appropriate action to proceed. Click on Start to initiate the task. It may take some time to scan the entire host. An important feature to note is OpenVAS's auto-refresh function, which updates the progress automatically. Let's set it to refresh every 30 seconds. Select the Metasploitable 2 task to view details such as what scan was attempted, how much time it took, what is the result, and many more. Navigate back to the Task tab and select Results. Here, you'll find a diagram chart and color-coded pie chart representing different severity levels. Click on any colored area to view the discovered vulnerabilities and their severity level. At the bottom of the results page, you'll see the vulnerabilities listed along with the affected machines. Since only one machine was scanned in this instance, only its results are displayed. Keep in mind that results will expand as more tasks are run. Selecting any of these results will give you in-depth information about the vulnerability. Additionally, you can consult the CVE details in the reference section for further insights. You can sort the severity levels by clicking here. On the Scan tab, click on Reports to get the detailed report based on the date when you scan. Click on it. Upon clicking on a report will display a list of vulnerabilities that occurred when you start scanning on the same date. Here, you can also sort the severity levels as we previously did. Selecting any of these results will give you in-depth information about the vulnerability. Similar to what I've previously shown you on the results page, you also have the option to download the reported data in various formats. This data can be utilized in different applications for thorough analysis. In this video, we covered a lot of ground. 
We utilized the Docker program to swiftly and seamlessly install OpenVAS, a program that can be challenging to set up. Towards the end, I demonstrated the most efficient way to use OpenVAS. With practice, you'll become more accustomed to it. If you have any doubts or questions related to this video, feel free to leave them in the comments section.